the formula column inside of monday.com may seem remarkably confusing, but with the help of AI, it's actually way easier than you think. There is in fact a tool inside of monday.com called the AI Formula Builder. And all you need to do is tell the AI what you want to happen with the formula column and it will write the code for you. Genius, right? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it. And I'm gonna give you some examples of where you can deploy the AI to save yourself time, effort, energy, or just giving up with formulas altogether. By the way, if you need any help automating, integrating, streamlining your business, check out the link below. We would love to help. So as you can see here, we are inside of monday.com. Now I'm on the deals board. I thought this would be most applicable. What we firstly need to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and add a formula column. So you can press the plus button at the far end, or you can just hover over one of the columns and then go to add column on the right hand side, go to more columns and then just search formula. FYI, you do need the professional version of monday.com to do this. If you haven't got the professional version of monday.com, you won't have access to the formula column and you might as well click away from this video now or go and upgrade. Um, entirely up to you. So you can see here, I am in the formula. Now we have this AI assistant formula builder, but what I want to happen first and foremost is based on the number of employees per this deal. So let's say there's 1200 employees for this particular deal. I want to do a basic calculation that says um, where there is 1200 or each employee is worth $5 or five pounds, for example. And then what I want the formula to do is I want to be able to get the value of the deal based on the number of employees. So you could do this manually and you could use all of the different resources, functions, constants and deploy the columns or we just use the formula builder. So click this option here and then it's going to populate here. It might ask you if you're happy to use the formula builder. Um, you might get a pop-up if you're using it for the first time. And then it's really this simple. So it's in beta, so they are testing it. It is getting better. But what I'm going to say is please create a formula. I'm polite when I'm talking to AI. Um, uh, to work out the deal value based on the number of employees where each employee is worth five dollars there we go let's see if this picks it up hit that and what it's going to do is employees times five insert and there you go all you need to do is set the formula there you have it 1200 times five is six thousand and then that's i know that was a really simple formula but it did it for me so the formula builder did it itself and all i said is deploy um, and then i'm going to say make this a dollar amount then hit enter then i can go ahead and press insert and now it's going to add the dollar amount for me as well as you can see and then i could go in as well i could change this so remove the two decimal places just hypothetically right and it's going to go ahead and do that for me and i'll go ahead and press insert set formula you can see how it's literally writing it I'm not having to do anything i never have to work any of this out it's super super simple right this is it's a bit of a game changer it's making me as a making me redundant unfortunately so i'm gonna go and put this as total deal deal, or deal value let's just say deal value there we go so it's six six thousand what i'm gonna say actually is i'm gonna say add two decimal places because i would like to have that in the formula uh, insert there we go set formula so now i've got that now i'm going to add another variable but I, these these are just examples you can go as crazy as you want with this i'm going to add a column to the right and it's going to be a status column and it's going to be currency okay so what i want to say is uh i'm going to add two currencies i'm going to add the gbp the great british pound uh, and then I'm going to add the USD as well, the United States dollar, the US dollar. So I'm just going to delete all of these. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm, what I want to happen is when the currency is GBP, I want to show it the pound sign. When the currency is the USD, I want to show it in the dollar sign. So now I'm going to go to my formula builder again. I'm going to click in and say where when uh, currency is GBP, show the sign. When currency is set to dollar uh, USD, use dollar sign. And let's see if this works this out. Again, we're putting it through its paces a little bit. Here you go. So now I'm gonna press insert. Now the chances of anyone that has just just run tries to run is running a business being able to work out that. Um, I mean, I would never have got there. So now if I change the currency GBP, you can see it runs into the pound. Change the currency to the US dollar, you can see it runs into the dollar. It's crazy the stuff that we can do here. Um, and then maybe we could 
take it a step further let's see what else we could do um you hopefully you're beginning to get the idea of the power of this though right like this is literally being written based on the instructions that i give it and the instructions that i'm giving it are not complicated i'm not giving it sophisticated prompts i'm just giving it what is kind of coming out of my head um and then i might say and then we could base it on the package as well that's not a bad idea actually so i'm going to add another status column and i'm going to select product right so what I want to say is we're going to have two, we'll have two product packages um, just for the example of this video. So I'm going to have big product or expensive product, and then I'm going to have cheap product, right? I don't know. I'm making it up as I go along. And essentially this is going to be a variable for the pricing. So if it's expensive product, we'll keep expensive. If it's cheap, it, um, well, if it's expensive, we'll make it $7. And if it's cheap, we'll make it $3. So now we've got a variable on the price as well. So if I click into the deal value, go to Formula Builder, um, using this, in addition to the current formula, um, please change the pricing per employee based on the product status. If the status is expensive product make employee cost per employee seven if the uh product is cheap product make cost of employee three there we go and we will hit send and i have no idea what it's going to come back with it's getting longer it's getting longer there we go set formula so now six thousand uh, dollars i believe it's still using the three to five no it's not using anything and then well i don't know expensive product or oh, maybe this hasn't worked maybe we've pushed it to its absolute limits <gasps> could you imagine um expensive product is it because it's non-capitalized i highly doubt it let's test it out this is actually quite fun to just see how this works um uh, right i'm gonna rewrite it so i'm gonna reset all of this so i'm gonna say where the based on the number of employees if the product status is expensive product make value per employee seven if the product status is cheap product make value per employee uh three dollars um based on the currency if the currency is usd uh, yeah, USD. Show this sign. Show. I'm literally making it up. <laughs> if the currency is GBP, show. And let's see what happens. I've got no idea. No idea if this is going to work or not. No. Oh. It's got smaller. There we go. So no product. Right, let's select nothing, so zero value. Expensive product, and then currency, GBP. GBP and USD is not working. Hmm, maybe we have pushed this to its upper limit. Um, and if currency is USD, yeah, which it is. Hmm, maybe, well, you get the idea, right? <laughs> As part of this video, this was obviously a test. It is still in beta, but this is how to do it. Expensive product if seven, maybe it's the way you're writing it as well, like the instructions I'm giving, or maybe having multiple status columns as variables confuses it too much. I don't know, but hopefully this will give you an insight into potentially what's possible. I'm sorry that this hasn't worked, I nor do I know how to fix this manually, unfortunately, but test it out. It's obviously going to make things a lot easier You um, than doing trying to do this yourself or hiring someone else to do it for you 
Um, it's quite insightful, very, very interesting. And it's definitely a feature that I can only imagine is going to get better over time as well. If it's only in beta at the moment, it's obviously got a lot of legs. I mean, other stuff you could do is, let's say, if it's the GBP and the USD, you could do currency conversion stuff, things like that. You could get really, really sophisticated. But hopefully this gives you an insight. Obviously, you can do equations for literally anything. Um, I have found quite a few instances where it hasn't worked, which is a bit frustrating. But I have I think 60, 70 percent of the time it has worked. 30 percent, especially for more nuanced, complicated stuff, we've had to write manually when we're setting up formulas for our clients. Um, another great example. Let me just show you one other. So in the deal value, um, I'm going to create a forecasting. So forecasting based on the status of the sales process. So I'm going to call this forecasting. Um, there we go. Close that down. Hide column summary. I'm just rambling on at this point, coming up with ideas. So based, so hang on, that's the actual code. So based on the status of a deal, assign a percentage value value for each step. Um, the percentage is based on the deal value. Let's see how well this works it out. Ah, so you have to give it explicit values. Okay, that's fine. So you have to give it explicit values. So if I go in and say, when deal status is equal to closed one or one, assign, um, uh, work out 100% of deal value. Yeah, that makes sense, I think see what happens yes there we go so when it's closed one which it is closed one deal value is eight four forecasting if stage equals closed one deal value times one yeah now i'm beginning to get a little bit more bemused by this formula stuff and the problem is i don't know how to correct it again test it out yourself i suspect it's more me poorly wording the questions or the instructions um versus the formula issue i do know that inside of monday.com you can run into a lot of issues um, doing a formula based on a formula when it's a complicated formula like this when it's a basic formula it's a lot easier but we do run into issues so hopefully this has given you some insight i know this has probably dragged on a little bit and it's probably not been as successful as a video as we would have liked but it's going to give you an insight into the formula function the ai builder um, and undoubtedly it will save you some time effort energy and actually give you what you want for the most part so check it out have a test let me know your thoughts and feedback if you do need any help automating integrating streamlining your business if you need any help writing code that the ai has not been able to do we would love to help check out the link below thank you for watching goodbye